Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by David Fitzpatrick, the Scientific Director and CEO of the Max Planck Florida Institute for Neuroscience based in Palm Beach County, Florida. He joins us for our discussion on the COVID-19 pandemic. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more insights like these. David, I'd like to start off by asking you, how has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the landscape of the global neuroscience community? Well, first of all, thank you, Abby, for inviting me to be here. Um, and, and I would say that the global neuroscience community, um, as all of science right now, um, has really been impacted in terms of our forward progress. Um, you have to understand you know, how many institutions are doing experimental work to unlock the mysteries of biology and lots of other mysteries. Um, and you know, basically, uh, we have been tremendously reduced in our ability to do the science, to do the experiments. Um, and you know, there are some things that you can do from home, um, but there are other things that require you to be in a laboratory environment and to be doing those experiments. And um, that has been uh, terrifically reduced uh, around the world. Uh, we are slowly coming back. Um, and I can tell you that um, there's, there's nothing uh, that impacts the scientist more than not being able to be in the laboratory doing the experiments. And so that's, uh, that's been a struggle. On the other hand, there's something that comes from this that people may not appreciate. And that is, this gives us time to think. This gives us time to think deeply about aspects of the work that we do that you know, we haven't had a chance to think about. And I know uh, one of my colleagues who's at a Max Planck Institute uh, in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, who happens to work on the olfactory system, um, has gotten really interested in trying to understand why is it that the COVID virus seems to you know, particularly uh, impact our ability to smell. And you know, try and understand what that means uh, in terms of the transmission of the disease and so on and so forth. So um, while we are uh, clearly um, you know, reduced in terms of our productivity, uh, we're doing all that we can to move forward in a very, very safe way. You just mentioned uh, the curiosity around uh, not being able to smell due to coronavirus. And there uh, were a number of uh, studies that came out. Uh, I read that uh, about 36% of uh, 214 patients from Wuhan had experienced neurological symptoms related to their illness. We've also seen strokes, seizures, um, loss of taste, as well as smell. What are your observations from the neurological side of what's happening right now with COVID vis-a-vis -vis the brain? Yeah, well, um, I, I will just simply say, we do not understand uh, what all of these symptoms are due to. Um, and in part, I mean, some of them could be vascular changes. Some of them could be actually, um, you know, changes in the neurons and the neural circuits uh, that are induced by this virus. And uh, like so many things that we're dealing with these days, we just don't know. And um, I, I would argue that there, this is a, another example of where, um, you know, our fundamental understanding of the brain, brain circuits, how they contribute um, to behavior, and how they're impacted by disease. You know, we, we need more information. We need a better understanding of, of all of this. And I think uh, now many people, and I, I'm sure people understood that before, but now it's really brought us to the foreground how important research is. Do you think that we have enough state and federal uh, support uh, but or might we see uh, more support come out of this pandemic? You know, um, I, I, would, I would say that we need to recognize the critical importance of fundamental basic science. And I know that when I use the word basic, there are a lot of people that go, oh, that's, that's boring, that's not interesting. No, what we're talking about is getting a, a critical understanding of the important details that allow us to understand how a disease impacts the brain or some other part of the body. And 
what I, I think is critical for people to understand, because, you know, um, we have all of these books and we have all of these journals that have all of this information. That's a lot of information, but it's a very small fraction of what we need to have to really deal effectively with disorders of the brain, the nervous system, et cetera. I think the Max Planck Institute is such an interesting element of the South Florida ecosystem that we have here. And you've been a, a strong part of the community for a long time. Uh, and during the pandemic, you shifted your manufacturing of one of your plants that used to uh, uh, produce the microscope parts to uh, build face shields. Talk to me about why you made that decision um, and what that means to your uh, community engagement within South Florida. Well, um, we have a, uh, a crisis team that continues to meet that involves, um, you know, all pe people at all different levels within the Institute. And, you know, we were having a discussion, you know, what can we do for our community? And especially in the early days, you know, the absence of PPE for the first responders. Um, this was, this was in, in our view, something that, that really troubled us. Um, and so uh, what we did is actually donate uh, a bunch of the masks that we had that were used within the Institute um, to, to first responders. Um, but we wanted to go beyond that. And uh, I was talking to uh, Marcus Clement, who is the head of our machine shop. And I said, what can we do? What, is there something that we can do? Because uh, this is a machine shop that I will tell you, um, I am so proud we are making microscope parts for the entire globe, okay? So he has an, he has an amazing ability um, to uh, create um, these small devices that are required for microscopes that lots of people come to him to get it made. And he just simply said, well, you know, maybe we can make face shields. Maybe that's something that we could do. Um, and I said, uh, bravo, let's, let's try and make it happen. Um, and he did. Um, and, you know, we, we actually would have made more, but we couldn't get more of the raw materials to, to make it. So that was, a, that was a bit of a challenge. But I, I'm very, I was very happy that we were able to contribute um, in that way. You know, we, we think it's really important for uh, our community, the public here, to understand what Knox Blanc Florida is about, um, we do uh, a, a lot of things to engage the public in science so that they understand the importance of the fundamental research that we do. Um, and this was just another way of showing how much we care. And should our viewers want to find out more information, where would you guide them? Well, um, please check out our website, um, mpfi.org. Um, and uh, there are lots of interesting things there that you can go off into lots of different directions. And I would say, please have fun with that. Awesome. Well, thank you again. That was David Fitzpatrick, the Scientific Director and CEO of the Max Planck Florida Institute for Neuroscience. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more insights like these. You've been watching Invest Insights, and my name is Abby Maloney.